Hey guys, still hanging out at Bernard Watch and uh, of course wanted to come in and take a look at the new seed roller that just came out, the two-tone version. You know, it is kind of bizarre in a cool way that you're actually seeing two tones of the seed dwellers. I mean, the Sea Dweller in its entire history has always been a stainless steel professional tool watch, and it hasn't really lost that. But, you know, they've resisted Rolex of ever making a gold version of it. So, you know, when we saw this release recently, it was a bit of a head scratcher for me. But uh, seeing it in person, uh, actually on my wrist as well, it's very cool. And I think you'd immediately probably assume that it's just a slightly different version of a Submariner, but there are some noticeable differences, not to mention the size of the case, which is 43 mil versus 40, but uh, pretty cool watch. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. So here's a very interesting piece. Uh, I never thought I'd live to see the day when Rolex decided to put 18 karat gold on a sea dweller, but uh, that day has come and here we are. So this is, I believe the 126603 Rolex sea dweller. And as you can see, it now comes in 18 karat gold. You'd be forgiven, forgiven for thinking that this is actually just a Submariner, but there's a couple big differences between this and a Sub, uh, not to mention the most obvious one to me, which is the size. Uh, this is 43 millimeters. And you know, on camera, if I had a Sub next to it, you probably wouldn't notice, but uh, I tell you on the wrist, you, you really do notice. And part of that is because you had the helium escape valve here, which is built right into the case. You know, Omegas, you have the screw outs up here at about 10 o'clock, but this is automatically uh, deployable and it will happen uh, should it need to if you're using this as a dive watch, although I doubt very many of you will. But, you know, this has all the benefits of the modern sea dweller. So, of course, you do get the Cyclops, which I know some of you love, some of you hate. You can still get a sea dweller without the Cyclops. Um, I think the Cyclops here looks tasteful. You get the benefits of the new Rolex Cerachrome bezels, which feel very, very nice. Um, it obviously says sea dweller on the dial, but you also get a substantially higher depth rating, in this case, 4,000 feet versus 1,000 feet for the standard sub. Again, I know most people aren't probably going to use it for that, but you definitely have bragging rights. And uh, the proportions of this watch at 43 millimeters, I mean, they still work very, very well. So if the 40 millimeter sub is a little bit smaller for you and you want something a little bit bigger, but you love the looks of the sub and you may not be going diving in it, or even if you want to go diving in it, you know, this is a great alternative, you know? So if you've been looking at like a two-tone sub, but you want something a little larger, here's your answer. Um, you know, lovely current series of maxi dials by Rolex. Of course, the magnification on the Cyclops is about two and a half times or so. Great legibility on the dates. Um, obviously it is a dive watch, so you get this lovely screw down crown for water tightness. Rolex is of triple lock, of course. Got the nice little gasket right there, if you can see that little black line. First position's winding, as usual. Second position changes the date. I was born on the 24th, so we'll stick with 24. And then third position, it hacks, and you can set the time. We'll do the 10-10 that everybody loves so much, or I guess we can do... Uh, We'll do uh, 11 to two or so, but we'll go ahead and put that back in. Winds very, very nicely. This has, I want to say the 32-35 movement in it, which has the enhancements over the 31-35 in terms of anti-magnetic properties and also a better power reserve. I believe these are about 70 hours, which is very, very, very usable compared to, you know, 50 hours or so of the older ones. And, uh, you know, the case, is a very wearable size still. I mean, yes, it is a little bit larger, and if you have a very small wrist, it may be harder to accommodate, but it actually works very, very well. Um, and as you can see, as a modern Rolex, the links are solid. So if you saw my video a week or so ago of all the old subs, um, this being a current gen C dweller with the gold, you get the solid gold links. You also get the nice current Rolex fold over clasp, which is very nice quality. There is also a glide lock system here for quick adjustment on the fly, which is extremely useful. As you can see here, it just slides back and forth. So you can instantly size it to your wrist, which is great. Uh, case back being a Rolex, pretty basic as usual. You get the little oyster sea dweller on the back of it. You know, it talks about the helium escape valve. Very basic, uh, you know, Rolex, that's how they do. And you have some nice screw out links. Overall, great presentation, great watch. Retail, these things just came out, so good luck paying retail, but retail on these is about 16,000 or so. And uh, again, if you're already looking at a two-tone sub, a couple grand more, you can get a, a larger watch if that's something you're interested in. Or if you actually are gonna use this professionally, then you are getting, you know, 4X the dive rating of a Submariner. So go ahead and do a quick little wrist shot here. Being an Oyster style bracelet, it's of course very comfortable. And uh, there you go on my six and 
three quarter inch wrist, you can see how it wears quite nicely. So uh, we'll keep this short and sweet. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. I'm really curious how you feel about 18K on a Sea Dweller. Now aside as a comparison, just so you guys can see the difference, here's a stainless steel version. And uh, as you can see, it goes from a very uh, pure tool watch aesthetic to a very luxury oriented watch. So these literally are very, very different iterations of the same watch. So I thought this would be kind of interesting for you guys to get a comparison. You get the gold on the bracelet, you get the gold on the bezel itself, and you get the gold hands and the gold crown. So if you're curious of what they change, there you go. For the same watch, it has two very different personalities available. So there you go guys, what do you think about having a Sea Dweller in two-tone 18 karat gold? I know it's a bit of a unique offering, I, I'm surprised they came out with it, but it works pretty well. And especially considering how most of these things are going to be you know, used day in and day out in an office setting, you know, why not go for 18K? And you still have the depth rating of a, you know, a stainless steel watch. So let me what you guys think in the comment section below what you guys think about this. And as always, I appreciate it. Give me a thumbs up if you liked it. Thanks for tuning in. And I'll catch you guys soon on the next video. Take care.